tenth Sunday after Pentecost. You're back here in New, New Jersey, so it's uh, part of the mission life. I guess to start start an hour late today, so we got here a few minutes uh, just barely before one, and we're supposed to start mass and then the confessions. But uh, it's good for uh, picking up a little patience. Start a little bit late, and then after mass, we have to head to. Uh, this time, well, this week we'll be going to Syracuse. So Syracuse gets very few masses, and uh, so we're trying to find a way to get Syracuse a few more masses, and so we're going to attempt uh, putting this as a possible alternate circuit to go up to Syracuse from here. And so this Sunday will be the first Sunday that we'll try to do that. And the epistle for this 10th uh, Sunday after Pentecost is taken from St. Paul's first letter to Corinthians, chapter 12. Brethren, you know that when you were heathens, you went to dumb idols according as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God saith anathema to Jesus. No man can say of the Lord Jesus but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of graces but the same Spirit. And there are diversities of ministries but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations but the same God, who worketh all in all. And the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man unto profit. To one indeed by the Spirit is given the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, to another the grace of healing in one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of speeches. But all these things one and the same Spirit worketh, dividing to every one according as he will. Within the gospel, taking that according to St. Luke chapter 18. At that time, Jesus spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves as being just and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one was a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee standing prayed thus within himself, O God, I give thee thanks that I am not as the rest of men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, as also is this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not so much as lift up his eyes towards heaven, but struck his breast, saying, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I say to you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, because every one that exalted himself shall be humbled, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. exalted. Thus far the words of today's holy gospel. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. This tenth Sunday after Pentecost, we have a consideration of the two spirits that are behind everything that happens in the world. We have an example today of two fools. One fool is mentioned in the book of Kings, which we read about in the Missal today, in the Breviary. Not in the Missal, but in the Breviary. We read of one foolish woman, one wicked woman, her name was Jezebel. And she had great confidence in herself and her own beauty. And today we read of her death. And another fool, who is a fool that is mentioned by our Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospel, who is a Pharisee. St. Augustine speaks of this Pharisee and he says, Should not this Pharisee say, I am not like many men, for many men are worse than me, but maybe some are the same as me, or maybe some are better. But this Pharisee says, I am not, I Lord, I thank thee, that I am not like the rest of men. For there is no one like unto himself. This Pharisee is a fool. And so Jezebel also was a fool. And they were both fools. And why were they both fools? One was a fool that followed Satan. The other is a fool that claims to follow God. And they were both fools because they believe that they stand upon their own feet. They believe in the principles that establish America. That we are independent. That we don't need other men. We don't need nature, we don't need oxygen, we don't need food, we don't need the stars, we don't need the clouds, we don't need God, we don't need the angels, 
We don't need anyone. We can do whatever we want to do on our own feet. We can do whatever we can. Whatever we can do, we are independent creatures and we stand only on ourselves. And this is the fool Jezebel and so many wicked souls and the fool, the Pharisee in the Gospel today. Now the great wicked and the great good, they are not fools. For both the great wicked man and the great saint recognize that we cannot stand on our own feet. They recognize that we do not belong to ourselves and we are not independent. We belong inside of a, of, of, of a universe in which is waged in the middle of a great war. And this is the war between the Spirit of God and the Spirit of hell. St. Augustine speaks of this war and of these kingdoms, of these two spirits. He said, two loves built two cities. The city of the love of God which leads even to the despising of self. And the other, the city of the love of self, which leads even to the despising of God, but they are cities, they are kingdoms, they are not something individualistic. And the great power of the devil is that his kingdom spreads. His kingdom spreads by making individuals believe a lie. Christ's kingdom spreads by the believing of the truth. The devil's kingdom spreads by the believing of a lie. And the lie is we are independent. The lie is that we are responsible only for ourselves. And that we make our own choices only for ourselves. And that we don't belong in a greater civilization. We don't belong in a greater structure. And this is a lie. Not only the lie that Jezebel believed. She thought her beauty and her intelligence would be able to defeat any of her enemies. And she was destroyed by her own foolishness. Or the Pharisee who said, I am not like the rest of men. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all that I have. I have listed all of my virtues. And this is the teaching of the devil to souls today. And the whole world is centered around me. Now the difference between the two fools is very little. One fool follows Satan, but he doesn't know it. The other fool follows Satan, and he also doesn't know it. For the one fool follows Satan, but thinks she follows herself. And the other fool follows Satan, but he thinks he follows God. And they are two fools. And this foolishness has entered into the world today, and it has spread amongst all of men. We are not the followers of our own selves. We are not the makers of our own little kingdom. We belong in a greater kingdom. And there are two spirits that guide the actions of the world. Just like we look at our own bodies. I have eyes. I have ears. I have a mouth. I have hands. I have, a, I have feet. And these move about. And they do many things. The hands do many things. The feet do many things. The mouth does many things. The eyes do many things. But we know there is one spirit there is one soul that moves the eyes and moves the ears and moves the tongue and moves the body. And this one spirit, when it is taken away, the body decays. And it is called death. But there is a body of this world. There is a body of a family. There is a body of a civilization. And there are many different parts of the body. But there is only one spirit. And it is either the Spirit of God and the angels, or it is the Spirit of Satan and the devils. And these are the two spirits. And these spirits, St. Augustine says, divide all actions. Every action that has ever been done has been obedience to one of the two spirits. We, every action that we have ever done is either an obedience to the Satan and his spirit, which are the majority of actions done by all men down the last 6,000 years. Or we are obedient to to the Spirit of God. And these two spirits do not act individually. They do not act independently. They act in an army. Every angel that acts is acting in relationship to another angel. And every angel that acts is working for a purpose. And his purpose is to spread the social kingship of Jesus Christ. To save souls and bring them out of sin into the kingdom of heaven. To give glory to God in an ordered and structured manner. 
And so it is true also of Satan. And here our Lord says, when he was accused of casting out the devils by Beelzebub, he says, I do not cast out devils by Beelzebub. For if I cast out devils by Beelzebub, how can the kingdom of Satan stand? But it does stand. There is an order in the kingdom of Satan. Now when we look at the world today, we see there are 7 billion people in it. And there are many different countries. And there are many different modes of communication. The various medium, media of communication. But when we look at them, look underneath and you will find a spirit. For instance, as one example just pointed out to me last night, Walt Disney. When you see the name Walt Disney as it is written by Walt Disney, you will find in it six, six, and six. A six in the W, a six in the I, and a six in the Y. Six, six, six. Why? Because Satan is the master of Walt Disney. And all men must choose who is their master. Everyone must choose what spirit they will follow. And the television puts forth a spirit. It is guided by a spirit. And all things that move in this world are guided by a spirit. And it is not an individualistic spirit. That is for fools. There is a spirit of God and there is a spirit of hell. And the spirit of hell is very powerful in our times. Open your eyes and see that the spirit of Satan is everywhere around us. And this spirit is moving the nations. It is moving the wealthy men. And when we decline to the highest parts of our society, whether it be the rich men that run the world, and the Illuminati and the Bilderbergers and the so on and so forth, or whether it be the high movie actors and actresses, or those that make great success, you will find the same with the musicians, the same with the politicians, the same with the extremely wealthy. They all have one thing in common in our age. They have given their souls over to Satan. And they have knowingly following the spirit of Satan or the spirits of Satan. As many of the actors say, when I act, I let the spirit take over me. I let a foreign spirit and a force enter me. And I say, forces, forces come within me. Spirits, spirits come within me and guide me in this acting. That's what Elena Dietrich used to say. Elena Dietrich's an old black and white actress. In the old black and white days, forces, forces come over me, spirits, spirits enter me, that I might be moved by the spirits in my acting. Some pray directly and explicitly to Satan, others they just follow the general lower demonic spirits. But these spirits are guiding souls to hell, and they have a purpose, which is to spread the kingdom of Satan. And there is a double preparation. The good spirit, he is preparing for the preparation for the coming of the Messiah in the second coming, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. And He is coming as a judge. And therefore we prepare ourselves to meet our makers. We prepare ourselves to meet the judgment. And we are preparing also intermediately for the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. But Satan is preparing for the coming of the Antichrist. He is preparing for the coming of the great leader, and you will find Hindus speaking of the great leader. You'll find it in the New Age movement, the preparation for the great leader. And they think that he will be some kind of New Age creature. They don't know that he will be a Jew and he will be a son of Satan. They don't know that he will be the direct servant of Satan. But they know the great leader is coming and they are preparing for his coming. And they, they are preparing around the world to unite the nations. Why the United Nations? So that they can be connected together when the great leader comes. And this leader is the Antichrist. And they are preparing the preparation for the coming of the Antichrist. And there are those that know what they are doing. There are those that are useful idiots. And there are those that are just complete fools. And all are being used for this preparation. We must decide on which side of the battlefield we will be. Either we are going to fight in the kingdom of Christ, or we are going to fight in the kingdom of Satan. Either we are going to follow the good spirit, or we are going to follow the wicked spirit. And the wicked spirit is preparing for the coming of the devil. And he has tactics. He has a way of fighting. As I mentioned earlier in the sermon today, in the earlier sermon today, the Muslims. 
Muslims fighting the Crusaders. And we find the Muslims, when they would fight the Crusaders, they love to fight in the night. They love to fight rather in the storms. They love to fight in the desert storms. And the massive storms of the desert. Because in those storms you cannot see your neighbor. And they operated best in the darkness. They operated best in confusion. Because in the confusion, the Muslim fighter does not need to listen to his commander. And he knows what to do in the darkness. He knows what to do in the confusion. And he would defeat the crusaders. Whereas the crusaders fought better in the light. They fought better when they could see the other soldiers. And they could fight in an ordered manner and listen to their commander. Whether outnumbered or not, they could fight well in the light. But they could not fight well in the storm. Now we are finding that the devil is very powerful. And the devil is visible everywhere in the world. He's there in the children's programs talking about sex. He's in the children's programs talking about disobedience, talking about the rev creating a revolution inside of the heart. He is, in the, he is in the souls, transforming them. One important thing that the devil does, and this is taken from the letter, in part from the sermon of St. John Chrysostom today. St. Chrysostom says, look at Jezebel, who dies, and we read about her today in the breviary, and look at Ahab. Ahab was an enemy of God and he was punished by God. And Jezebel was an enemy of God and she was punished by God. But she was punished much more than he. She received a greater punishment for not all punishments are the same. Not all receive the same punishment for one sins who sins alone. And one sins who decides to sin on his own. And this is a great sin and gets its punishment. But there is another sin, which is the sin of preparing others to sin. The sin of organized sin. The sin of getting others into sin. And this is the sin of Jezebel, who tried to arrange the sins. She arranged the sins of her husband. She manipulated her husband into sin. And she manipulated the kingdom into sin. And therefore, she had a viciousness about her sin, and an organization about her sin, and God counted her organization, and she received a greater punishment. We read about it in the, in the breviary today, in the book of Kings, that King Jehu came into the city. Jezebel adorned herself, and put on makeup, and precious stones, and she went on top of the second floor of the house, and she looked down, and she said, to the sons of, what dost thou to say about the, the sons of Zambri? And he looked up and said, Who is this? The soldiers told her it was Jezebel. He said, Go up and throw her down. And they went up and threw her down. And her blood filled the wall and it smashed upon the ground. He then went to eat his supper. While he was eating his supper 30 minutes or maximum one hour later, he said, That wicked woman, she was the daughter of kings. Go and bury her, for she was the daughter of kings. And so they went out. She had been dead for 30 minutes, maybe a maximum of one hour. And they went out to collect her body, but her body was gone. For the dogs had eaten up her body, and the servants came back and said, Her body is gone. Her skull alone remains. Her hands remain, and her feet remain. But the rest of the body is gone and has been dragged off. And Jehu said, I remember, for it was the prophecy that God made through the prophet Elias that, her, that she would be eaten by the dogs and her blood would not be able to be buried and she, her body would be, the worthy of, would be worthy of dung and she would be dragged out to the field of Jezreel. Jezreel means there will be blood. And we can say this Jezebel, she is the average woman of today. Not the exceptional woman, but the average woman. For Jezebel was filled with blood. And you look at the women today, they are filled with blood. As St. As John Christendom says, Behold, Achab was a wicked king, but Jezebel was more wicked, for the wickedness of the woman had surpassed the wickedness of man. And so it is in our times. In our times, the wickedness of woman has surpassed the wickedness of man. In normal times, the man is more wicked. In our times, the woman is more wicked. And these are also signs of the demonic. For the devil acts like a woman. Christ acts like a man. And we see more feminine behavior in our times than any other time. More feminine sorrow wickedness in our times than any other time. Including even when men are wicked, they are wicked in the way of women. And they are not wicked in the way of men. Now one of these wickednesses that cannot be forgotten is abortion. We go back to the old days, back when men were not supposed to be nice, several thousand years ago. We find in the most satanic religions, 
that the devil always demanded the sacrifice of babies. In India, for instance, the Hindu priests would take a baby, a newborn baby, they would take him up to the top of the little temple, and they would take him and they would throw him onto the rocks below and kill the baby. They were the nice ones. Others would burn babies. Others would eat the babies. Others would cut out the skin, skin the babies alive. But we find that in all of the pagan cultures, there is a necessity to sacrifice babies to Satan. And what is this abortion? And why is it so important? Because it is a sacrifice. Just as Jesus Christ demands a sacrifice for the worship of God, so Satan demands a sacrifice for the worship of hell. And he gets power off those sacrifices. And all the pagan religions, the great and evil ones, teach the same, that the power of the Satan comes from the drinking of the blood, and especially the blood of babies. Especially the killing of babies. And we must not limit ourselves to those several million abortions. That's only a small percentage of the babies that have been murdered by women today. We must remember birth control. We must remember the contraceptive pills. An average woman can easily have 30 different babies that she murders during her lifetime just through the regular birth control pills. The real baby is conceived, the real baby is murdered. And these murders are all sacrifices to Satan. And they are sacrifices to Satan. And why, are they, how, why is it important? Because he wants innocent blood, but he wants innocent blood that does not go to heaven. He wants innocent blood that will never see God face to face. And therefore he loves the blood of babies. And the devil is being worshipped by this abortion. And it is a spreading of the kingdom of Satan in amongst our people. And we must not consider it only as a tragedy because there's less taxpayers. Because there's less people to go out there and buy things. Because there's less people to feel loved in a family. It is about the worship of God versus the worship of Satan. It is about two kingdoms that are waging war over this earth. And Satan wants the destruction of this earth and that souls not be saved. And the best way that he can do that is by the massive sacrifice of millions and millions of babies which are acts of worship towards Satan. And part of the preparation of this satanic worship is that a little girl when she is very little must learn to be impure. She must learn to dress like a prostitute. She must learn to act like a prostitute. She must look at those that are impure as those that are the examples of her life. And they are trained from the very youngest age to be wicked so that they will, wickedness will come in and out of their lungs like breathing air. They will breathe in and out sin as the same as breathing air. And this is our age. And the majority of these women throughout the world, they do not want Christ. They do not want God. And even those that placate their consciences by going to modern churches, whether it be the Novus Ordo churches or the various Protestant heretical churches that are out there, seeing today by one of the churches all the 90-year-olds and 90-year-olds going into the church, going into the church. What is happening? They are placating their consciences. They are not there to worship God. They're there to placate their consciences because when they look inside of their own souls, they can see that they have stamped out the divine life. Children are not in their homes. And this is a tragedy. But why is it a tragedy? Because God is not in the home. We have these large homes all over America. And these large homes coming up all over the world. But they are empty of children and they are empty of God. And they are places of satanic worship. That is what is going on. That is why we find people more and more and more interested in strange pagan religions and the worship of Jia and the looking of seances increasing more and more and more. They are ready. The world is ripe. So that when the Antichrist comes and he says, I am God, the people will be ready to worship him. They will be ready to adore him because they already know his ways. He will be a man of blood. We are in a kingdom of blood. He will be a murderer. We are a people of murderers. 
He will be a, a man that sins in his individual life, sins in his social life, and lives for the purpose of sin. And he will already be familiar to modern man because modern man is ready for him. He is already from the very comfortable with social sin. What happens when you look at the TV? You see it in the airport. And there is the TV. And it says several thousand people killed in Afghanistan. Several thousand people killed in Beirut. Massive slaying. Many people dying. And on the bottom it says, you know, Cubs 3 and, uh, you know, Yankees 4. Yeah, the Yankees are winning. That is what we care about. We don't care about blood. It does not suck, shock us anymore because we live in blood. We are followers as a nation of Satan. And the people of the world are followers of Satan. And we must recognize in our present conflict within the Catholic Church that it is not a battle between a couple modernists in Rome and a few traditional Catholics standing with the faith. It is a battle between the whole of heaven against the whole of hell. And, and, the, and the battlefield is on every single space and every atom and molecule in the universe and especially here on earth. This is the battlefield and there are seven billion souls that Jesus Christ is trying to bring to heaven. And there are seven billion souls the devil is trying to bring to hell. And he's not trying to make them to hell in a haphazard way. And neither is Christ trying to make them to heaven in a haphazard way. There is a kingdom versus a kingdom. A city versus a city. A king versus a false prince. And this war is going on. And we must decide, shall I belong to the kingdom of Jesus Christ and fight for the spreading of his kingdom and his ways? Or shall I belong to the kingdom of Satan? And one of the great tragedies of our time is that many souls who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ have become so familiar with the demonic ways that we want to use those ways in order to spread Christ's kingdom. We need to compromise a little with sin in order that sinners might repent. This is the way you destroy, not the way that you increase and then also, we find in the temptation in our own society, St. Pius X, many priests who say, I am, am faithful alike. I am going to fight against the liberalism of Menzingen. I am going to fight against the liberal false teaching going on and being spread throughout the society and throughout the church by silence. I'm going to fight it in the dark. I'm going to fight it in the storm. I'm going to fight it in secret ways so no one catches me because after all, we are outnumbered. And we forget... When Gideon went into the night, it was dark. How did he destroy the enemies of God? He carried a lantern. And he told the other 299 warriors, You see me lift the lantern, you lift the lantern. In the middle of the night, they lit the light. And when the light was lit in the middle of the night, the Amorites were sure there was a great army upon them and they slew each other. Here Gideon fought in the middle of the night and he lit the light. Jesus Christ fights with light. The devil fights with darkness. We do not fight error by secretly condemning it, secretly disagreeing with it, secretly maneuvering around it, I'm telling those people who know the truth, I am going to tell you people, you people that understand me, that the liberalism is bad. And let's, let's talk about being against the liberalism. And let's have secret meetings against the liberalism. These are the meetings of the Illuminati. These are the meetings of the Masons. They are not the meetings of the Catholics. We are not yet in the time of persecution. <clears throat> when the physical persecution comes and we must go to the catacombs, to the catacombs we go. But until that time, we must preach the truth in the light. And we must use the light. And when a priest or the faithful are tempted to stand for the truth in secret ways, so that they don't get kicked out of the parish, so they don't get refused Holy Communion, so they don't get expelled from their parish and from their uh, priory and from the society, they are following Satan. They are experiencing what Sister Lucy called the Lady of Fatima, the diabolic disorientation, which is that disorientation 
by which a good soul that loves God, a good soul that wants to do the right thing, is deceived and begins to swing at the wrong enemies in the dark, begins to fight in the wrong way. We have become too familiar with the devil's ways. We cannot operate according to his ways. We cannot. There are two spirits. These spirits are always opposed. The spirit of God, the spirit of hell. These spirits move our every action. And all we do is decide at each moment of the day, which spirit will I follow? Shall it be the spirit of God leading to the spreading of the kingship of Christ? The spreading of the truth throughout the world? Preparation for the judge to come and give us a merciful judgment? Or is it going to be the spreading of the kingdom of Satan? We must decide. And we must not make the mistake of becoming fools who think that we are only individuals. It is one of the temptations we're dealing with in our present crisis. People are saying, Father, just last week I was in Dublin and in Glasgow. And had a call to Germany, went over to Germany, and then came back and then returned here yesterday. Father, we want you to say Mass here, at this house, in this place. You get a priest, send a priest here. We need a priest for our regular Masses. And to hell with everyone else. Because all that matters is numero uno. And that's me. And this is the thinking of Satan. We cannot win the battle of Christ by using the thinking of Satan. And the thinking of Satan is the thinking of selfishness. We need souls that are ready to sacrifice a few masses here and there. But are ready to stand with the faith and recognize the need. That there are souls everywhere in the world that need Jesus Christ. Souls everywhere in the world that need the Catholic truth. And in this time of crisis in which there are a few priests, the priests must go to many places. And there will be gaps between the time when Father comes and when Father comes back. But we must not follow the principle of selfishness and think that we are following God. I am ready to stand for God so long as I got my tax benefits. I am ready to stand for God so long as I got everything I need exactly as I need it. I am ready to stand for God so long as it doesn't make my life uncomfortable. I am ready to stand for God so long as it looks really good. 4,000 of us against 200 of them. No problem. I'm on your side. But when the tide changes... And when we seem outnumbered, and when it seems like things aren't going to look so well for us, then I tell you what, I will wait for better times. The trouble is, Christ may come and visit before those times. And if He finds us on the wrong side, He will not forgive. As St. John Christendom says in his sermon today about the death of Jezebel on this tenth Sunday, he says, do you not think God will send a punishment? Who sent the rain from heaven that killed every man on earth except for eight? It was God. Who sent the waters to kill every single man in the army, in the army of Pharaoh? It was God. Who killed 70,000 Jews because of the sin of David? That David committed one sin of pride, counting the people in his kingdom. And God came down to the prophet Nathan and spoke to David, says, because of your pride, I will kill 70,000 of your people. And 70,000 Jews were killed because of the one sin of pride of David. One part of the sermon we forgot to leave, we forgot to mention, how far our sins spread. Our sins are not alone. We commit a sin and it reaches to others and it reaches the generations. Therefore God counts the others. He counts the generations. How many souls commit sins because of the impurity of dress of the modern woman? And each one is counted. And the girl is punished by God as Jezebel was punished. And so also... We must see the seriousness of the fact that we cannot take our sins and spread them and lead others into sin. And it goes to generation to generation. A grandfather leaves the faith. And what does that mean? Come a hundred years and there are thousands without the faith because of one sin of one man whom you never met. Your great-great-grandfather, whatever it was. 
sins reach until the end of time. And that is the reason why there must be a general judgment. That we might see how far our sins have reached and how they've reached to all the world. And so likewise our virtues and so likewise our good choices, they reach to the ends of the earth because we are soldiers in a battle. And when a soldier swings his sword, it affects and strengthens the kingdom. Or when a soldier swings his sword badly, it damages the kingdom. And we are followers of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, soldiers of the kingdom of our Lord. And in this kingdom we fight against the enemies. And we must recognize we are not individualistic fools. We are members of an army. And we must decide whether we wish to remain in the army of Christ or join the army of Satan. And if we are in the army of Christ, let us fight with Christ's rules. Let us fight following His Spirit, not be deceived by any diabolic disorientation. And this is only possible with the great love of Mary, and the great confidence in the rosary, and the great confidence in the scapular, and the great confidence in the miraculous medal. These things will protect us. We need armor in this great fight. And let us go with these armors into the battle and have confidence in our faith, have confidence in the Spirit of God, and not be deceived by the false spirit of the devil. In close that, God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.